By the middle of the 19th century, the Tories were now predominantly called the Conservatives, but they had split over the repeal of the Corn Laws, and many prominent members like Gladstone and Aberdeen followed former Prime Minister Robert Peel. So Derby, a Conservative, only had a small minority, and his cabinet was filled with many inexperienced politicians. So it was dubbed the Who Who Ministry, yet his Chancellor of the Exchequer was Disraeli. But Derby's first budget was incredibly unpopular and voted down, and the government collapsed within months. The prominent Peelite politician, the Earl of Aberdeen, formed a coalition with the Whigs, and he was able to bring political rivals Palmerston and Russell into his cabinet. Aberdeen, however, could do little to stop these two from trying to politically outmaneuver one another, and the cabinet was fiercely divided over international issues. Palmerston, for instance, as foreign secretary, was forced to resign because he recognised Napoleon III as Emperor of France. But as many still feared a Bonaparte emperor in France, Palmerston was more concerned with Russia and their expansion. This the Eastern question dominated British politics in the 19th century, and Palmerston was able to gather a pro-war faction within Parliament and brought Britain into the Crimean War alongside France against Russia. Aberdeen himself was opposed to the war, but as news over the poor conduct of the war began to emerge, Parliament voted against him in early 1855. Palmerston took over, and even though the new Tsar wanted to make peace, he prolonged the war until Sevastopol fell, and he was able to demilitarise the Black Sea. However, for a long time he wanted to expand the war on more fronts, and end the threat of Russian expansion entirely. But he was soon swept up in another war when the Arrow Controversy sparked off the Second Opium War in China. And then, in India, a large rebellion, the Sepoy Mutiny, broke out the same year. And this bloody affair caused a great deal of controversy, and led to the end of the East India Company's control in India. And at home, he gave courts the right to grant divorces, taking that right away from the church. Plus, he was also Prime Minister during the beginning of the Italian unification process. And his downfall came when an Italian named Orsini tried to assassinate Napoleon III. Palmerston tried to pass a bill making it a felony for any British person to go abroad to assassinate somebody, but this was narrowly defeated and the cabinet collapsed. Derby returned to form a government with Disraeli, and after the Sepoy Mutiny was subdued, he passed the Government of India Act. This transferred control of India from the East India Company to the Crown. However, the old coalition of Peelites, Irish MPs, Radicals and Whigs had formally created the Liberal Party, and this party won the election of 1859, so Derby's second term in office was again short-lived. Now a united party, Palmerston's Liberals like Gladstone and his old rival Russell, formed a new cabinet, and his second term in office was again dominated by foreign affairs, notably the outbreak of the US Civil War. Although opposed to slavery, Palmerston hoped the Confederacy would weaken the USA and prove to be a vital trading partner. And when the US illegally captured Confederate diplomats from a British ship during the Trent Affair, Palmerston sent troops to Canada in preparation. And in his cabinet, Gladstone was also in favour of intervening on the Confederate side, and so too was France but ultimately Palmerston's attention was turned to Europe and war was avoided. This is because in Europe, in Greece, King Otto, a former Bavarian prince, had been removed from power and the Greek population asked for Victoria's second son to become the new king. However, Palmerston, who had helped Otto become king of the new nation in 1832, pressured the Danish prince George to take over. And then, as Prussia and Austria invaded Denmark in the Schleswig-Holstein War, Palmerston, against the wishes of many, refused to help the Danes. By now he was around 80 years old and many believed his views on foreign powers were outdated, seeing France or Russia as the greatest threats and seeing Bismarck's Prussia as comparatively weaker. For instance, even though France and Britain had worked closely together internationally, he still ordered the construction of forts along the coast, believing Napoleon III's France was still capable of an invasion, especially after the French had resoundingly defeated the Austrians in the Second Italian War of Unification. And he also saw America as a great threat to Britain, especially as some Americans were sending arms to help feigning violence in Ireland. But despite his good health, he died in 1865. Russell succeeded him but failed to keep the cabinet united as he pushed for further electoral reforms, allowing the Conservatives to come back to power. The end of the American Civil War had emboldened calls for more representation in Britain, and the likes of Karl Marx and John Stuart Mills were publishing works in Britain at this time. So Derby and Disraeli quickly passed through the Electoral Reform Act of 1867, doubling the amount of voting men from 1 million to 2 million. This seemed to end the threat of a rebellion, but Derby's health declined and was forced to resign in 1868. The Conservatives only had a small minority in government, 
so an election was called for in December 1868. These elections were, as a result of the reform, the most expansive ever. But despite passing the reforms, the newly enfranchised middle classes and urban men voted for the Liberals and the Conservatives lost more seats to Gladstone. Gladstone was Chancellor of the Exchequer and he developed his own political doctrine based on low taxes and laissez-faire capitalism, something which would be called Gladstonian liberalism. As such, he reduced public spending, particularly in the military, and introduced a number of reforms to make the society somewhat more equal. The University's Test Act allowed non-conformists and non-Christians to attend and teach at Cambridge, Oxford and Durham. The Elementary Education Act set the framework of schooling for children under 12, hoping to educate more underprivileged children. The Landlords and Tenants Act in Ireland protected the tenants from being unjustly evicted and saw the disestablishment of the Anglican Church of Ireland. And under Gladstone, trade unions were made legal and voting in elections was finally made secret. He also saw the creation of the High Court which limited the judicial powers of the House of Lords. But as he sought to limit Britain's expenses, he tried to keep Britain out of wars and improve relations. However, most British people were shocked by Prussia's defeat at France in 1870. In the aftermath, the military saw a lot of reforms like stopping the sale of commissions, decreasing the minimum enlistment time to attract more men, and the number of reserve troops was greatly increased. Yet despite these reforms, he angered many by introducing laws regulating the opening hours of pubs, income tax angered the middle classes, and the secret ballots allowed Irish people to vote for the Home Rule Party. So he lost the election in 1874 to Disraeli's Conservatives. Disraeli, despite being a conservative, introduced a number of reforms which helped workmen more than any liberal government beforehand. Picketing was legalised, employers and employees were made equal in the eyes of the laws when contracts were breached, a factory act limited work hours for women and children, Sanitation was improved to stop the spread of cholera and typhoid, and work was done to improve housing in the cities. But Britain again became involved in foreign affairs, like in 1875 when they purchased stocks in the Suez Canal after Egypt went bankrupt. But he too was particularly concerned with the Eastern question, especially after the Russo-Turkish War of 1877 broke out. Britain remained neutral but prevented the Russians from taking Constantinople. Plus the first treaty which created a large Bulgarian state was thought to be too beneficial to Russian interests. So Disraeli was instrumental in the peace treaty carving the Balkans up, and in return for taking the Ottoman side, Britain received Cyprus. Plus he made Queen Victoria the Empress of India, and hoping to keep the Russians away from their borders in India, the Second Anglo-Afghan War broke out, and the British installed a new ruler in Afghanistan. In South Africa, the Zulu War broke out, and initially they suffered a heavy setback, but eventually won out and expanded their colony. But in 1879 there were poor harvests and the Conservatives lost the support of the farmers as Disraeli refused to bring back the Corn Laws. So losing a lot of support from his base, the Liberals were able to win the election of 1880. Back in power, Gladstone ended the Second Anglo-Afghan War, turning the state into a protectorate. He oversaw the disastrous First Boer War and the outbreak of the Mardist War in Sudan and the British bombarded Alexandria during their invasion of Egypt. Now, as a liberal, he was in theory opposed to the scramble for Africa and large-scale empires, but he saw the Suez as essential to protecting free trade. But through invading Egypt, he worsened relations with the French, who had financed the canal, and the Ottomans, who nominally controlled Egypt, and they lost all authority there. Domestically, he expanded the right to vote to include another 6 million people, but his main focus was international affairs. However, despite being active in Africa, he delayed aiding General Gordon in Sudan, who had been besieged by the Mardists. And when the force he sent finally arrived to relieve the besieged city, they found that Gordon had been killed. So facing public backlash, Gladstone resigned in early 1885. The Conservatives under Lord Salisbury formed a new minority administration, and they quickly set about trying to improve the housing of the poor through a new act. But without a majority, Salisbury could do little, and the Irish Parliamentary Party voted against them on the land bill, so he had to step aside. Gladstone returned to power less than a year later, but by now the Irish Parliamentary Party proved to be the deciding vote between the two major parties. So Gladstone tried to appease them by promising to pass through his Home Rule Bill, giving Ireland their own parliament. But this proved incredibly unpopular and split the Liberal Party in two, with the Liberal Unionists joining the Conservatives to defeat the Home Rule Bill. Now with the support of the Liberal Unionists, Salisbury came back into power and tried to bring Britain out of its period of splendid isolation. And his first proposed alliance was the Mediterranean Agreements with Italy and Austria-Hungary. 
and in order to defend their new interest in the Mediterranean, the Navy was granted a further £20 million in budget, and this brought about the two power standard, which meant the Royal Navy had to be stronger than the next two powers combined. Yet in 1890 there was a strain in relations between Britain and their oldest allies Portugal. This was at the height of the scramble for Africa when Portugal tried to connect their colonies of Mozambique and Angola, but this would stop British plans to connect Cape to Cairo. So Salisbury offered an ultimatum to the Portuguese, demanding they withdraw, and the humiliated Portuguese would endure a revolution shortly afterwards. At home he introduced free schooling and workers received compensation, but he still lost seats to the Liberals in 1892, and the Irish nationalists with promises of home rule aligned with Gladstone. In power again Gladstone kept his promise and passed the second Home Rule Bill. This time it passed through the Commons, but was defeated in the House of Lords, and despite public pressure he refused to expand the Navy. This is because as a classical Liberal, he wanted to keep the budget balanced. So he lost support and resigned, the oldest ever Prime Minister, as he was in his 80s during this last term in office. Rosemary had been the leader of the Liberal Imperialist faction, and although favoured by Queen Victoria, he lacked the support of many left-leaning Liberals, notably William Harcourt, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, who would undermine him in Parliament. And he had to straight away deal with the Armenian crisis, after the Ottomans massacred tens of thousands of Armenians. Rosebery lost a great deal of support because he did not intervene, and the Liberals split over his plans to expand the fleet. So he lost a vote of no confidence, and in 1895, the Conservatives and Liberal Unionists won a landslide, and Salisbury came back into power. Salisbury back in power focused again on foreign policy, and quickly became involved in the Venezuelan crisis. Tensions rose between Venezuela and the British colony of Guyana, but the USA challenged the British from interfering in the Americas, and Salisbury had to back down to de-escalate the crisis. And in Africa, the British crushed the Mardists, but the British nearly came into a conflict with the French during the Fashoda incident, but war was averted when the French stepped down. However, in South Africa, the Boers successfully fought back the private Jameson raid, and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany publicly praised the Boers in doing so, so the British began to see the Germans as the biggest threat now, and this is when the naval arms race with Germany largely began. Plus, in South Africa, tensions continued to rise, and the Second Boer War erupted in 1899. Although initially unprepared and beaten back, the British, after spending a great deal of money, won out, and Salisbury won the election of 1900, which was dubbed the Khaki election, in the wake of this success. But he soon became ill and resigned in 1902, allowing his nephew, Arthur Balfour, to succeed him. 